Hey, good afternoon to you. It's 507 here, News Talk 105.9 WMAL, where we are making sense of the news. You can join us today at 888-630-9625, 888-630-WMAL. The Democrat convention continues today. Outside of that convention, uh, Democrats have racked up a kill count of at least 25 people this week, they're proud to say. Planned Parenthood uh, set up a, a truck for that mission uh, outside the building there. And uh, CBS was crowing about this today. So they said, uh, Planned Parenthood offers free abortions, comma, vasectomies at mobile clinic near DNC. That they uh, offered some of their services for free on Monday and Tuesday in a mobile clinic near the United Center during the Democratic National Convention. The group provided free vasectomies, medication, abortions, and emergency contraception by appointment at the mobile clinic parked just blocks from the DNC. Planned Parenthood had said it served between 20 to 30 patients over the two days the mobile clinic was near there. Uh, further, the New York Post reports that uh, they uh, planned on conducting a total of 25 medicated abortions throughout the day uh, over uh, Monday and Tuesday. And, of course, they're, they're bragging about this. Uh, here with uh, more on this subject, Sean Carney joins us now. He's the president and CEO of 40 Days for Life. Sean, good to have you with us. Thank you, sir. Good to be on. Thank you all. Uh, what do you make of this? What is the message when Planned Parenthood proudly sets up uh, a kill wagon outside of the Dem convention? Well, it definitely shows the DNC has just propped up abortion, celebrated abortion, which has never been done at any uh, political convention. But they've just shown that they, they see abortion as a sacrament. And there's two parts to this. There's there's the dark part, right, which is, my word, they used to have free cocktails and, like, koozies and, and tote bags at these things. Now they're just giving away abortions and vasectomies. So yeah. there's that part. Uh, but there's also the goofy part with people dressing up as an IUD and, and people dressing up as an abortion pill. And that that just very out of touch with, with women who have had an abortion. Abortion is is serious and they they're turning it into a circus unquestionably so and and it's a, a huge uh, attitude change about the issue that the left has adopted from the the era of bill clinton the safe legal and rare era is long gone uh now we're at the point where it's celebrated and handed out in the swag bags oh it's it's a joke i mean even even just the theme i mean Kamala was doing something nobody's ever done, which is run on abortion um, and run on the culture war, actually, is the oh number one issue. And nobody's ever done that. Americans typically don't want the culture war to be uh, the number one issue. So it's risky what she's doing, but it's also awkward because, yeah, Bill Clinton's a joke. Heck, the whole message of the convention, I mean, besides Obama, who was just Obama and just like pie in the sky, everything's going to be great, yeah. us and them without saying us and them um, – you know, hope and change, that was all positive, safe, legal, and rare. I don't like abortion. I mean, that was kind of like giving people permission to support abortion. This is just this new abortion at 40 weeks. We won't provide health care to a baby girl who survives an abortion, and it, it's it's insane. And I think it wears people out, abortion, over all the depressing topic. Well, it is a totally depressing topic, but unfortunately it's being foisted on us by the left who constantly evangelizes it, as you pointed out, as if it's a sacrament. Uh, and uh, additionally, uh, they're, you know, this just this very week, you know, President Trump comes out and goes, you know, we shouldn't have a country where you can mutilate children uh, and then their parents are left out of the equation. That, that seems crazy. Um, people should be prosecuted for that. Uh, and yet that's what the left advances. I mean, th this this is what and fundamentally at its core, all of this is is certainly anti-human, but anti-family. Very importantly, Sean Carney, why are they so obsessed with that? Well, it, it's it, it is anti-family. And, and now they're going after gender. And, and what has happened to the homosexual movement is is now happening to the 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 feminist, which is it's being hijacked by the transgender people. And that that's exactly what's happening. And so you can't stand for, you know, reproductive rights for women uh, if we don't know what a woman is. The other thing, going back to what you said, Planned Parenthood providing all these free services, they can't do that. Uh, we just went live on, on FoxNews.com with our, our filing uh, to the IRS. 
uh, because Planned Parenthood is providing free in-kind donations. They're a 501c3 nonprofit. They can't do that at a political convention. And so we filed an official complaint so yesterday smart. with the IRS. Not only are they a 501c3, they also receive money from us, the taxpayer. Uh, and, $700 million. Yeah, and they're, so they're using that money to you know, give people SNPs, vasectomies, uh, at the convention as, in a, as a way to signal their support for Democrats? And it's all in their own words. I mean, it, it's not like we're making this up because we're a pro-life group and we don't like them. It, it's all in their own words. The, the recklessness of, of, of saying we're going to the DNC and offering these free services, they didn't do that at the RNC. You know, and and that is just a uh, a blatant violation of, of their 501c3 tax status. So um, the whole thing, I think it's going to backfire. I mean, I really do. You know, you can get up for 10 minutes and talk about reproductive rights yeah. and all that. But if you wail on abortion an hour per night for four days in a row, whether you're for or against it, by the way, you just wear people out. And and I think that's what they're doing. It's a big turnoff. Meanwhile, um, uh, your, some of your fellow pro-life organizations are responding uh, in a, I think, in a, as a typical impressive fashion. Um, pro-life advocates are now offering free diapers outside the Democrat National Convention in response to all of this. Uh, and uh, the you have a, a group called Every Life. It's a pro-life diaper company. They announced this initiative. They've pledged to provide a lifetime supply of diapers to mothers who plan to keep their babies to continue their pregnancies. Uh, and that's part of a collaboration apparently with Sidewalk Advocates for Life and Thrive Nation, uh, which mm -hmm. they are, they're also including ultrasound services through a mobile medical unit stationed outside the convention. So on one hand, you've got the kill wagon and on the other side, you have the life wagon. I, I don't know if you could get a more uh, jarring uh, division between the two. Oh, it's great. And, and it's so positive, you know, and it kind of reminds everybody there that, hey, the world's not, you know, completely insane. And even if you're attending the DNC, I mean, most people uh, that support abortion genuinely, they don't want abortion at 40 weeks and they see it as kind of a necessary evil. The fact that it's going on outside the convention is just freakish. It and is weird. By the way, that the Thrive brought their big pregnancy center bus out there. It's beautiful. They spent a lot of money on it. It's awesome, and it's next to Planned Parenthood, and Planned Parenthood's next to it looks like something Cousin Eddie would drive. I mean, it's, it's really <laughs> – the choice Eddie. is very clear what you want to walk into. Yeah, it is. I, I was thinking, like, who who's just, like, randomly going to the convention and thinking to themselves, you know what? While I'm here, uh, maybe I'll get an abortion? I, I don't, the, the This is not really adding up for me, and yet they, you know, Planned Parenthood, they're crowing. They said tw 25 uh, babies' lives extinguished this week. They're bragging about it, and that's just not – they can't read the room. They can't read the tax code either. They, they just it, – it's not what people want. I mean that is – even your your abortion supporters who are obviously all there and are mad that Roe was overturned, yeah. but they're like, they don't like now we're doing abortions and vasectomies in the parking lot? Yep, that's, that's where we are. Sean, um, how have you seen this debate change over time? It seems like – uh, it does seem like a lot of people became pro-life, but mean thanks especially to medical imaging. But the, at the same time, like right now in this election specifically, because Democrats are are clinging so tightly to human sacrifice, I do see a lot of Republicans who are like, yeah, let's just put this debate on ice for a while. Yeah, and those lost big in 2022. The ones who who didn't apologize for the Supreme Court were staunchly pro-life, won big in 2022. You look at DeSantis, you look at Greg Abbott, where I live in Texas, you look at uh, Kemp, they all had heartbeat bills. They were like, no, this is a great day for America. Right. Abortion is terrible. And and you see the pro-life movement becoming the pro-compassionate side, uh, the, the uh, pro-science side, the we provide medical resources side. And that's why the conversion gate on this issue, whether it's women who have had an abortion or doctors who have done abortions we have one who works for us or abortion workers when they change their mind on this issue it's always from being pro-abortion to pro-life nobody's running a pregnancy center and in, in 30 years says i should have been working at planned parenthood that doesn't happen uh, it, it's only one-sided and that's because yeah. of of science and common sense well yeah and also having a baby is a very radicalizing experience too this is what i recommend if you're if you're even contemplating an abortion have a baby first and then in the future you know use that as your frame of reference like would you be for it no, you wouldn't. Uh, thank you very much. Sean Carney, 40 Days for Life president and CEO. Good to talk to you today. Really appreciate that, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you all. That is a great.
Sean Carney. Uh, and let's see. I've got Steve calling in from Bowie now, line two. Steve, good afternoon, sir. You're on the Vince Colony Show. Hey, Vince. A great uh, topic. I'm a, a pro-life uh, conservative Christian, and um, when it comes to abortion, um, I I have a couple of ideas. One, uh, for all, I can stop abortion with just one piece of legislation. Um, if you believe in, in abortion, you have to practice it purely, and you have to have abortion every time. And uh, so within about one generation, all the abortionists will be gone. Um, the second point is that um, just like the Black Lives Matter movement, we should come up with a Baby's Lives Matter movement. Ooh, I like that idea. I, the first idea, you know, you, it, it makes sense in theory, and then you watch what actually happens in real life, which is the left has been, you know, very uh, aggressively and enthusiastically uh, pro-human sacrifice for some time. And it hasn't actually, in the end, uh, diminished the fact that there's still so much of it going on because, you know, they, they take over our schools and the institutions and they evangelize it. Sure. Uh, but uh, your, your, your latter point, I think, is excellent, that, that – that uh, people should very proudly stand up for a baby, babies' lives matter movement. That makes total sense. And you look at the, you know, this truck that's Thrive Nation is the is the bus that shows up here. They're the guys who are out offering assistance to m pregnant mothers. They're the ones who are offering medical services, ultrasound services. They're offering. They, they've got the lifetime supply of diapers going on here. All of these crisis pregnancy centers across the country. They're designed right. to actually intervene on behalf of the struggling mother. Because what should we create? Even even if you're a Democrat who is enthusiastic about abortion, don't you want to create a world where you don't have to turn to abortion in order to have a successful life? You know? Right, right. Uh, it's, it's also interesting. My uh, daughter, who was uh, you know, a very devout Christian, uh, she went off the rails, and she's now a— a hard leftist, and now she's pro-abortion, where she was pro-life. It's amazing when you go from light to darkness how you, she's a Black Lives Matter activist. She's, you know, pro-abortion. She's for, uh, she's against the Jews. She's for Gaza. Uh, she's uh, LBGQ. Mm. Um, she's, she calls herself a queer now. And I said, well, you know, if you went to Palestine and uh, try to support the Palestinians as a queer, they would push you off the side of a building. Do you know that? No, 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 no. I mean, they don't even know, that, realize that the Palestinians hate, you know, gay people and yeah. and queer people. So how did that happen, Steve? Since you're sharing, I just I'm just curious where where was it uh, that that things changed? Uh, um, my daughter has a rare uh, disease or condition. Um, her body produces too much spinal fluid. It goes to the brain, and it causes it to swell, and your octave nerve can, um, you know, be destroyed and go blind. So uh, she went on a mission. She went on a mission trip to South Africa. She came home, and the diagnosis of her condition was exposed. Um, she had to have immediate surgery, they put two stints in her brain in order for her brain to dwell the excess fluid, but they put the stint on a nerve ending. So she had constant head pain uh, anywhere from a six to a nine every day. Oh, man. And from that, she said, God doesn't love me. Um, he won't take away my pain. And she went totally the opposite direction. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to keep her in, our, in my prayers, uh, Steve. Thank you for okay. the call and for, for sharing that. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. All right. God bless. Hold on. I've got more for you. It's 521. All right. The uh, phone lines are lighting up, so let's go to them. We've got Steve calling in from Nebraska, line two. Hello, Steve. You're on the Vince Colony Show. Well, hello, Vince. Uh, can you hear me? I hear you great, Steve. Okay, excellent. So let's play. Let's ask these people who want to, the, to have these abortions. Let's play this out. Everybody who has a pregnancy aborts. Mm -hmm. Within a generation, all the population will be wiped. All the new population will be wiped out, and, yeah. and within less than a hundred years, there will be no people. Is this a zero population growth, save the planet mechanism? I mean, like, let's 
ask the question. The follow up. Well, question, right now, I mean, we're already in a in a state where we're having immense population collapse. Steve, so if you were like the kind of person who was interested in the public policy of this, you weren't making any moral assessment of all of it. The the thing you'd be prioritizing is not shrinking the population, but instead growing it, uh, because that's a critical thing. Uh, they're doing the opposite, Correct. aren't they? Yes, that's right. And all if you take a look at all of the uh, evolved evolved country, Western Europe, Italy, France, Germany, all population are declining. Yes. Uh, Japan, population is collapsing. So the educated population, the, the, produ- the productive population is going away. So what, what good is what's good? Good will come of this. You're totally right. All great questions. All great questions. It's crit- critical ones uh, coming up. Uh, more of your phone calls ahead. Also, Kamala Harris fled the entire state of Illinois last night as Obama spoke. Why did that happen? We'll get into the details ahead on the Vince Colonnais Show. Good afternoon to you. It is now 535 on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. You can join us today, 888-630-9625, 888-630-WMAL. That Democrat convention continuing in Chicago. And uh, we have a report out of Chicago this afternoon that the police there and the FBI are now investigating whether maggots were intentionally slipped into the breakfast prepared for delegates attending the convention. According to a law enforcement source, source speaking to WGN, the local television outlet, It's unclear, they say, if the contamination was discovered before any of the delegates consumed the food. Delegates were buzzing about the insect attack as Chicago police officers and Illinois state troopers gathered in the lobby of the Fairmont Hotel near meeting rooms. Quote, they protected us, of course, and turned it around in minutes, said Indiana delegate Tracy Boyd who is at the convention representing the Indianapolis region. She said her group was notified that breakfast service would be briefly delayed due to the incident. Quote, I really do want to give a shout out to the hotel staff and leadership, she said. An FBI evidence response team van was parked outside the hotel this morning. Quote, we can confirm that a group of individuals caused the disruption at a DNC-related breakfast event at our hotel this morning. That was a uh, Fairmont Chicago hotel spokeswoman called Haley Robles who told WGN the following. She said, our team acted immediately to clean and sanitize the area, ensuring that the event could continue without further incident. Multiple law enforcement sources say it appears the maggots were brought into the hotel by activists seeking to send a message. Quote, all Americans have the right to peaceful protest, but ugly attacks like this have no place in our democracy, said Indiana Democrat Party spokesperson Sam Barloga. Quote, we thank the security team for responding swiftly. Uh, okay, so who are these people? Are these Trump supporters dropping maggots into the food at the uh, Dem convention breakfast? Law enforcement handling security for the convention released the following statement Wednesday. Quote, multiple unknown female offenders are, are alleged to have entered the building and began placing unknown objects onto tables containing food. The offenders are believed to have then left the area. One victim treated and released on scene along with The Chicago Police Department, FBI Chicago is assisting in the investigation. No further information available at this time. Now, they were hosting that that hotel was hosting a bunch of delegations, Indiana, Minnesota, Ohio, Missouri, South Dakota. uh, And U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Boot Edge Edge spoke at the hotel this morning. So Boot Edge Edge was in the vicinity of the crime scene. No word on whether or not he's a suspect. (laughs) The, The maggot attack. That's not the first maggot attack that we've seen, is it? We've seen this a couple times now. Here in D.C. we saw it, remember? And the theme in D.C., that was the end of July. I'm going now to the New York Post for their coverage back at July 24th. Anti-Israel infiltrators unleashed maggots and crickets at the Israeli delegation's hotel ahead of Benjamin Netanyahu's speech. So uh, this is, a, I guess that's a theme among the the anti-Israel crowd among the pro-Hamas crowd, they're dropping maggots all over everyone's breakfast and they're uh, on their dining tables. Maybe that's what's happening here. There's a, a big pro-Hamas contingent hanging out at the Democrat convention. 
conducting a maggot attack. Although I'm wondering, why are Democrats complaining about this? I thought they wanted us to eat bugs. Maybe that's just for us. Maybe bugs for thee, but not for me. They're not, they're not, uh, when, when maggots actually end up in their meals, they're opposed. <laughs> no, no, no bugs for me. Thank you. I don't eat bugs. Uh, so that's the, uh, the update. So more chaos going on at the convention. Uh, last night, Kamala Harris was not in attendance at her own convention. This is a party for her. Remember, everyone's dancing around. I'm with Kamala. Little John showed up. Yeah. He's with Kamala. Uh, well, Kamala wasn't with Kamala. Kamala wasn't there last night. She had flown the coop. She got out of, got out of Dodge, got out of the Windy City uh, as Barack Hussein Obama or as Joe Biden calls him Brutus spoke last night at two Brute, Brute Obama. Uh, Brutus Obama took the stage last night and uh, gave his speech. It was a big night. Everyone's very excited. It was very electric, as they tell us. It was a, it was a, a big night for the left. Van Jones was going absolutely crazy. This, this was a masterful act of leadership. It was a sacred task. They took it on well. Uh, it was like an, an, an oasis. Uh, I didn't realize I had been in a spiritual desert until they created that oasis on that stage, and they did a beautiful job tonight. The they there he's referring to. Barack has not adopted they, them pronouns that I'm aware of yet. He's talking about both Michelle and Barack on stage, uh, President Obama and Michelle Obama on stage, and uh, saying uh, they just created a spiritual oasis for me. So amazing. I just... Had a great time. So what did uh, Obama's address sound like? Cure our borders without tearing kids away from their parents. He built the cages. Who built the cages, Joe? Just like we can keep our streets safe while also building trust between law enforcement and the communities they serve and eliminating bias, that will make it better for everybody. Yeah, we won't tear kids away from their parents. Who built the cages, let's, Joe? Let's talk about what Who we're talking about. Who built the cages, Let's Joe. talk about what we're talking about. In fact, I, I uh, gave you an incorrect number last hour. I gave you, it was in the tens of thousands. That was an error. It turns out the Biden administration has lost track of 291,000 children who have crossed our border. 291,000 foreign national children who have crossed our border. We've also learned, of course, over time that many of them are in horrific conditions, human trafficked in, sex trafficked in, uh, forced labor by those kids. 291,000 of them have gone completely missing inside the borders of our country. Yet another disaster. Uh, and as Obama stands up there, he was like, we got to secure our borders. We can't tear kids away from their parents. Really? What's happening right now? Under your guy, under your guy, or well, the guy you just deposed, just unseated. So uh, all of the available reporting on the subject tells us that Joe Biden and Barack Obama actually, in, in real life, don't like each other at all. And that Biden is very stung to the extent that he can still rub thoughts together. He's very stung by the fact that Obama stabbed him in the back, coordinated throwing him out of the White House. And so one of the storylines today, one of the one, one of the, the realities here is Kamala Harris and Tim Walls were not present yesterday for Obama's speech. They were a hundred miles away in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They weren't at their own event. The the one where everybody was talking about them? Nope. Not there. Fox News reported this morning that they were told that the plan was to keep them away from the DNC to avoid the optics of Kamala Harris appearing alongside one of the figures that Biden views as responsible for helping end his reelection bid. A source familiar with the situation telling Fox News, quote, the Obamas are still not on the White House's good side. It would not be helpful to their relationships. We are in tricky territory, the source said. I love that the, the, the whole convention, they're like, oh, we're so together, yeah. They're not. It's, 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 everything is infighting and bickering and backstabbing and passive aggression and, and inefficiency and not being able to get to events on time and ridiculous renditions of the national anthem where they can't even sing. That was one of my favorite things. The, the Democrats, the, the women yesterday trying to sing the national anthem. Oh, say. So proudly we have 
Twilight Flash. Oh my gosh. They don't do it that often, so it's hard to blame them. You know, they, they, not, not a lot of practice. Uh, meanwhile, the Democrats who are outside the convention are saying things like this. Every Palestinian support Hamas, not just me. Every Palestinian support Hamas. Do you support October 7th? Who? October 7th. October 7th? Yes, I do. What do, what do. What's wrong with October 7th? You tell me. Women and children. What? To murder. What is this? <laughs> and then they're burning American flags outside the building. So it's going great, is all I'm trying to say. It's going fantastic. So uh, Kamala and Tim Walls skipped their own convention because they don't want to be seen alongside Obama because they're afraid that they're going to insult Biden. And actually, to be honest with you, my guess is it's not even really that. It's probably they just want to avoid the picture. They don't want Kamala Harris and Obama on the same stage together or Kamala on video cheering for the things that Obama's saying because then the story becomes, look at her, so grateful to her hitman. So grateful to the guy who called in the hit uh, because it's a coup. It's a coup, and Obama arranged it. It's not the first time he's done that, though. Obama did do that for Biden back in 2020, didn't he, during the primary phase? Biden was uh, not gaining the traction they felt was necessary. Bernie Sanders was doing too well. The field was very crowded. Obama made a couple of phone calls. Did you remember that? And the entire field dropped out. Okay, uh, we're done. And it was left to Biden. It was left to Biden. Uh, and, and this time he's, Biden has outlived his usefulness. And now he's gone. Kamala's in place. No votes for her. And she can't even appear on stage with Obama, the guy who made it happen. That's, uh, that's the way it went. Also, uh, yesterday, apparently, the, there was the, uh, the Doug Emhoff speech. That was uh, Kamala Harris's husband who gave an address about her, and uh, she was not there. Uh, here's Mr. Kamala talking about uh, how much he loves he loves the one thing that none of us love. Well, you know that laugh. I love that laugh. <laughs> so that's what, so, so she really wanted to watch the speech. She was like, I, I can't wait to hear what he has to say about me. He's talking about me, so I have to watch it. And uh, it turns out that Kamala was in an airplane at the time. Paid for by you, just to be crystal clear. Kamala, Kamala Harris burned 15 minutes of jet fuel so that she could watch Doug Emhoff give the speech from the sky. Do we have that? Do I have a, I have audio to that effect from CNN? CNN reported it, so that's, that's why I'm wondering. CNN reported that uh, Kamala Harris spent the speech in the air. Here, actually, here is the audio. Take a listen to this. Yeah, you know, the vice president was returning to Chicago after having campaigned in Milwaukee earlier in the day, and she was on Air Force Two when her husband, Doug, Doug Emhoff, the second gentleman, began speaking at the convention. So the plane actually circled for an extra 15 minutes, we're told, in the sky so she could finish uh, watching his speech. Of course, M So much for climate change. You know, 15 minutes, they're just... Did they, did they dump extra fuel just to really, really drive it home to the rest of us? You know, how many, how many degrees is the Earth's temperature going to change because of that decision? Kamala Harris flying for an extra 15 minutes in the air. Now, here's a, there's a bunch of questions I have. One of them is, why do you need to keep flying to watch? What is, is, uh, is she that scared of the landing? Like she's, she's too panicked to keep watching the screen? Has she ever been on an airplane? Well, of course she has. She keeps flying around at our expense. I've watched plenty of things sitting in my airplane seat and I've even gone through the landing and I just kept watching. <laughs> I, what, what is this? She was like, no, no, it would, it would be very annoying if you landed right now. Keep circling 15 minutes. I'm going to keep watching this speech. It could, the speech could not have been that good. What was Mr. Kamala saying that was worth staying in the air for? And I rode to little league practice in the way back of my coach's wood paneled station wagon. And if we did well, we got to have a Slurpee after. That's what she was in the air for? 15 minutes, just like, oh, and, oh he's telling the Slurpee story. <laughs> why, why are you doing this? Why are you, why are you wasting, forget the climate change crap. Why are you wasting so much fuel that we have to pay for? Why are you doing that? Again, to hurt us. It's uh, 549 now. WMAL. Let's go to the phones. I've got Paul calling in from Alexandria, line two. Paul, good afternoon, sir. You're on the Vince Colony Show. 
Hey, Paul. My man, Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul. Paul's calling in. Paul's not there. <laughs> Paul wanted to point out that uh, there were a bunch of delegates in the uh, convention. Are you there, Paul? No, he's not. I thought I heard a noise. I didn't hear a noise. Um, uh, a bunch of delegates who were there last night who voted present. Now, th none of this even matters because they voted in like on the Internet weeks ago. So Kamala's already the nominee officially. So all of this is, is really stupid. But 44 DNC delegates voted present during the roll call vote yesterday, which, of course, is merely symbolic. Uh, meanwhile, among the, 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 uh, the people who voted for Kamala, uh, New Jersey had a guy who calls himself a woman by the name of Dr. Joey Perella. So he didn't, did he change his name? He goes by Joey, but he says he's a she, her. Is that what he said? Anyway, you can take a listen to what he said. My name is Dr. Joey Perella, pronouns she, her, hers. I'm a proud resident of the Garden State. I'm proud to stand with Kamala Harris and Tim Walls because they stand with the LGBT. He's wearing a purple dress and he has long brunette hair. LGBTQ community. It's super exciting for him. Oh, I'm sorry, she, her, hers. Uh, and then there's uh, Tony Evers, the governor of Wisconsin last night. I, I don't know if he suffered some sort of health episode as he was uh, saying that Wisconsin is going to give its votes to Kamala. But listen to his inability to get this out. I, I'm wondering, is it maybe something, maybe whatever Biden has is spreading. I'm here because I'm jazz as hell <laughs> to announce that Wisconsin passed one vote present and 94 votes for, for, for oh, who are we at? Got me going here. <laughs> former Wisconsinite, former state. Oh my God! We I, love you, Tony. I, we love you, Tony. I, I, woo! 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 Ninety-four votes for. Oh my God! I'll get there, Jason. I'll get there. 94 votes for former Wisconsinite, vice president, and our next president of the United States of America, Kamala Harris. Um, <laughs> was that get up and get down? Was that the music they were playing? Uh, yeah. Oh, jump around. Yeah, jump around. House of Pain. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He was jumping all over the place. He couldn't get it out of his mouth. <laughs> what was that? Anyway, in case you're wondering, it's a total dumpster fire in Chicago. Part for the course. Uh, tonight, what is it? Bill Clinton tonight? How many nights are they going to have to give warnings to the women attending the convention? Biden spoke on Monday. Clinton <laughs> speaks tonight. All right, stay safe, everybody. Uh, we'll cover whatever comes out of the convention, and we're headed towards Kamala's big speech. Whatever they've written for her tomorrow, we'll keep covering it all right here on WMAL. The great one, Mark Levin, up next.